There's very few photographs of Howard anywhere other than cross planes, that, or at least that we can identify. So the ones where we knew where he was, I wanted to go to that place and get my own picture. Uh, like Todd did in Lincoln, uh, I did that a few years back with uh, Don Heron. Don Heron played Myers and I was Robert E. Howard. Um, our first trip uh, with my dad was in 2005, August, and we went to Fort McCavick, found the spot of that photograph, and lo and behold, no one in Robert E. Howard fandom had ever done that before. So I was like, hey, I think I found a niche. Yeah. And that'll be the thing. So we've been doing that for a long time. Um, we found a new one not too long ago, and we went and did that. Um, this hobby tr transformed into visiting courthouses and finding court documents and genealogy and all that other stuff. But it began with this. This was our most recent trip uh, for a photograph of Howard. It, it's in Cisco, Texas. Here's a, what it looked like in 1927. And in 1928, Robert E. Howard wrote a letter to Harold Priest talking about going to the Cisco Dam, uh, and watching some people at the swimming pool uh, with his buddies, that kind of thing. Um, this photograph, we never knew where it was taken before. Uh, it's Howard boxing with Truett Vinson, location unknown. Then when Glenn Lord passed, we got this photograph that was in his collection. Same place, Howard probably took that picture. And on the back of this one, Truett Clyde doing a bathing beauty pose on the Cisco Dam. So now we know where the photograph before it was taken, we have to go and get shots okay. of ourselves in those places. So now it's my turn. Go. Okay, so wondering about the Cisco Dam. Well, turns out you can still get there. There's a recent color picture, circa 2010, I think. We'll switch to black and white and zoom in on, I believe it's the world's <coughs> largest swimming pool that uh, was at Cisco, <clears throat> which begs one to think that Gee whiz, maybe uh, Howard and friends weren't up there to get their picture taken. Maybe they were scoping out the chicks. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, here's an old video that I found uh, that shows the dam and the swimming hole. And uh, never mind the copyright stuff on the bottom. I hope there's no copyright police in here. But uh, <laughs> uh, Very short video, probably 15, 20 seconds at the most. Uh, Howard and company would have been standing up on the top of that dam. He does talk about uh, the trim forms or, or something like that of the Texans in the pool. <laughs> okay, so he was scoping out the chips. <clears throat> so one, one of my hobbies is to find an old photograph and then Try to, try to duplicate it, try to put myself in the same position <laughs> that the photographer was when he took the old photograph. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's one. I need a t-shirt of that. Yeah, you did, okay, and there's two. <laughs> From taking pictures in the places where Howard had taken pictures, we kind of grew into visiting courthouses. Uh -huh to see what the Howards had done in uh, certain counties. If, if you know anything about the early movements of the Howards, they were all over the place and they never stayed in one place for very long. Uh, some biographies have talked about the places that the Howards were at, but most of them miss at least one and others miss more than one. De Camps missed a couple and had some wrong information about some things. Uh, a lot of that can be attributed to not having the internet or just not having a travel budget. Uh, teacher on summer break, I get to go mm -hmm. wherever I want. And I've been to almost every county in Texas, it seems like. Uh, I'm gonna start with Palo Pinto County, even though that's not where Dr. Howard first started. He was uh, born in Arkansas. They moved to Texas in 1885 and landed in Limestone County. Uh, he got his medical degree. Well, he started practicing medicine, let's say in uh, 1899, probably also in Limestone County. Then he moved to Freestone County where he registered his license to practice. Then he was up in Montague County in 1901. Also had a trip in Oklahoma in there somewhere. 
all that is real sketchy. There's one piece of paper that puts him in those places. But in 1902, January 1st, January 8th, excuse me, 1902, he registered in Palo Pinto County, and he spent a lot of time there, comparatively. Uh, next. Besides the registration, we have a collection of birth and death reports that list his residence as Christian. <laughs> we also have uh, the Standard Medical Directory has him, I am Howard, in Christian, Palo Pinto County, Christian's population is 50. Doc Howard loved tiny towns. Christian is just an example. Uh, while he's living in Christian in Palo Pinto County, he meets and marries Hester Jane Irvin. And the last bit of paper we have for him in Christian is dated April 15th, 1904, I think. November 11th, 1904. That's the last piece of paper for him living in Christian. All that's left of Christian today is a road sign up in northern Palo Pinto County, uh, Old Christian Road. There's no, no town of Christian, so it didn't even survive. In 1905, April 13th, 1905, there's an item in the Jacksboro newspaper that says Dr. Howard, formerly of Christian, is now Bryson. Uh, I only discovered that online last year sometime, so I hadn't been to Bryson yet, but I was there yesterday. So uh, what we have instead is a picture of Jacksboro. Uh, I went to Jacksboro years ago, did a search of the court documents, didn't find anything Howard related there. Then I found the newspaper clipping, so I had to go to Bryson. I have pictures on my phone if you want to see that. The next piece of evidence for him anywhere is in 1905, Parker County, where he did not live in Peaster, he lived in the town of Witt. Um, he starts registering births and deaths in Witt uh, May 12th. Those continue until at least July 19th, 1905. And he's in partnership with another doctor. Did I get flip it? Per Pickens. Perkins. I've, done, I've got a whole folder of research on him. Interesting guy. Uh, that's the last bit of him in Witt. Here's what Witt looks like today. There's not a whole lot there. It's another tiny little Texas town that's drying up very quickly. Next. Uh, then he moves over to Peaster, where mm -hmm. his son Robert is born. The earliest we have him in Peaster is September 29th, uh, and he's there. The last piece of paper we have for him is February 9th. It's a newspaper clipping that says Dr. Howard is boasting of the only boy baby born in Peaster so far this year. I don't believe this uh, exists anymore. That was the, the big thing in Peaster for a while. There's a giant modern school there. Uh, it's a pretty small community also. After Peaster, they moved back to Palo Pinto County where he starts registering births, listing his residence as Grafford, Grafford, Grafford. I always say it wrong. Uh, from May 31st until May 5th, 1907, he's in Grafford. Uh, Grayford was probably the nearest town that had a post office. The Howards were actually living in a place called Dark Valley, near Dark Valley Creek. It's hard to get to. There's all of this kind of stuff. And like Todd said, you don't want to cross the fence. Or at least I don't. According to Google Earth, there may be a four-wheel drive road. There probably is, if, if you know the ranch owner. Uh, after May 5th, 1907, they had moved uh, across the county to another town called Oran, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, from Oran, they left Palo Pinto County in Jan no, December of 1908, and they landed in Big Spring for a few weeks. There's a newspaper clipping that doesn't say Cran, it says Oran. Uh, Dr. Howard and his family are here. They've gone to Seminole. He wants to be a physician. You know, he's a polished gentleman and a fine physician. Uh, Hester's brother was the publisher of that newspaper. Uh, that's the Big Spring Enterprise. Is he the guy in the... Yes, okay. W.B. Urban. Uh, here's a picture of Big Spring. They're only there for three weeks. Another newspaper <clears throat> clipping. Did we put that? No. Uh, newspaper clipping three weeks later says that the family was delayed due to illness, and they're off to Seminole, which is in Gaines County, not very far from Big Spring. Uh, when we were there, the only evidence we could find at the courthouse was a, a, an entry in the death death record where Dr. Howard records the death of a uh, child. Seminole. In Seminole, yes. Seminole, 
biggest town. Spread out. Pretty. Yeah, it's kind of spread, spread out. It's, spread, it's way a spread out. decent yeah. sized town. Yeah. Uh, of all the places Doc Howard went to, Seminole is one of the bigger ones. Um, he registered. That makes some sense. Uh, he registered February 3rd, 1908, but we didn't know that until later. We'll get to that in a minute. From Seminole, he moved to Bront in Bront, wait, Cook, I forget the county, Coke, Coke okay. County. Um, he registered there, this is from the courthouse. He registered there September 14th. There's the depot in Bront. Uh, they only stayed in Bront until about August 27th, 1909, so less than a year, just a little less than a year. Uh, there's a record of birth certificates that I found online uh, that all have Dr. Howard's uh, address as Bront. After Bront, this is pure speculation. There's a letter in Dime Sports Magazine where Robert E. Howard says that he was part of the last pioneer movement and that his family took a covered wagon down the Nueces River when he was a kid. Uh, I'm theorizing that this is about the time he did it. Uh, this move from Bront before they show up in San Antonio later. Uh, they would have started in Crystal City where, or they would have landed in Crystal City after going down the Nueces a bit where Rob, uh, Dr. Howard's sister was living in Crystal City with, uh, forget the guy's name, Oscar. McClung. Uh, here's the McClung family of Rush Springs, Oklahoma has arrived in San Antonio. They go to Crystal City. They actually purchased a lot of land there that the courthouse records show. Um, here, if you just above Barksdale is Bront, and you, this is the Nueces River. So they come down from Bront, get on the river, visit sister in Crystal City, and then the next place we have him is in San Antonio, where he registered on November 20th, 1909. This is the great document that shows all three dates for the registrations in Seminole, Palo Pinto, and Bront, the county. That's how we got the February date for Seminole. Here's the Staghorn Saloon that Robert E. Howard wrote about in his letters, also in San Antonio. They didn't stay in San Antonio long from November 20th, 1909, when he registered. He next registers in the town of Poteet on January 8th, 1910, so barely a month in uh, San Antonio. Next, and here's the depot in Poteet, another tiny little town. After all of this, this trip, they end up right back in Palo Pinto where they had left, um, landed in Oran. There's a big, or there used to be kind of a mystery about the Howard's movements from 1910 to 1912, 13, before they went to Bagwell. No, they were in Palo Pinto County in Oran the whole time. Uh, they're on the, almost the whole time. The May, 6, May 16th, 1910 census, they're in Palo Pinto proper, I think. Uh, but then they start showing up in Oran. There's a series of birth and death re records that have him living in Oran, Texas until 1912. There's nothing left in Oran, but a couple of things like this and a bunch of houses. And then there was a mystery about the Wichita Falls country from Robert E. Howard's letters. Uh, Sprague de Camp said he went looking for that and that Howard didn't live there. But we went, one of our first trips was in Clay County. Take it away, Pop. Okay, so uh, we, uh, we found the Clay County Courthouse. And having been to numerous courthouses and asked for the physician's registry, Usually we'd get a runaround. Uh, the county clerk has that, and so you'd go to the county clerk's office, and they'd say, "No, the district clerk has that." So after time, we figured out that most of the time that was the district clerk, right? So at Clay County, we walked in there. There was a young lady, much younger than me. I speculate, perhaps in her mid thirties. We asked for the physician's registry, and she turned her back on us, went into another room, came back with this book and commented, gee, you're the first guys who've ever asked to see this. <laughs> so anyway, there's, that's Clay County. Clay County is the Wichita Falls country that Robert Howard wrote about in his letters. We've got Dr. Howard's signature on the registration 
and it says that they were living in the town of Byers, which is way up on the Oklahoma line, um, as Howard described in his letter. So we, of course, had to go there and get a picture of Byers, another tiny little Texas town. I say tiny little Texas town. I live in Los Angeles. You know. <laughs> when did he register there? Uh, he registered there December 19th, 1912. And again, they didn't stay very long. April, 13th, April 30th, 1913, he registered in Bagwell. There's the registration document. Uh, there's a series of birth and death records also <clears throat> from him. The last one is signed November 27th, 1914. So they spent some time in Bagwell. Uh, this is the oldest building in Bagwell. According to a couple of locals, this used to be a church. It's somebody's barn now. But it's, uh, they said this was around during the Howard's time. That's why I have a picture of it. Uh, after the November 27, 1914 birth record in Bagwell, they landed in uh, the local area, Brown County. He registered in Brown County on January 26, 1915 listed Crosscut as his residence. Uh, the newspaper from, from then said that Dr. Howard of Putnam has moved to Crosscut. That's the only piece of paper that has them in Putnam. Must have been visiting there. There was a, uh, a pretty large medical facility. Uh, I forget what the, uh, what the sanatorium. sanatorium in Putnam at the time. <clears throat> Any questions about any of that? Then they appear from Crosscut to Burkett to Cross plates. I'd be curious if you knew offhand, how many babies did he deliver? <laughs> uh, I could count how many certificates I have, but even those aren't going to be all of the babies that he yeah. delivered. Why did he move so much? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, he, was, he, was he a serial killer? <laughs> no, the, the, you know, the current theory is that Doc, Doc Howard is always looking for that, that thing. Uh, most of these towns were on the verge of a boom or had just experienced a boom, and he's going in there to make some money real quick, maybe. And then it just didn't work out. It was all kinds of booms, oil booms, uh, land booms. Bagwell was uh, lumber. Lumber. Yeah. And railroad, railroad stuff was going on in Palo Pinto. <coughs> Rob didn't he also wheel and deal quite a bit in land? Yeah. Uh, he was, yes. Well, later, he's buying cheap land too and selling it. So, yeah. Way in the back. The town of, you say it, Oran? O R A N. It's called Oran. I oh, yeah. Or, uh, Oh, Bront, yes. Like, it's named after the Bronte sisters, but they don't call it Bronte. I'm trying to figure out where it is. It's in Coke County. Coke? San Angelo. Yeah, it's around It's San just Angelo. south west of San Angelo. Okay, I thought you said, you mentioned Barksdale. And I thought you said Barksdale? No, I mentioned Clarksdale. Or when Clarksville. When uh, they were, I guess, taking the boat ride or whatever it was down that New yeah, River. Right. Was right. It yeah. Crystal yeah. City. Yeah. You said oh, yeah, there was a map that showed Barksdale yeah. and Oran is right. above that. So it's Oran, no, Bronx. 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 Damn. <laughs> yeah, there's too many towns. Okay, but how, I, I'm familiar with the advances up there. What? I'm trying to figure out where Bronx is. Further up near San Angelo? Yes. Okay. It's just south of San Angelo. I don't know, it's, can't, it's gotta be further because I, I don't remember anything other than Vance up by Barksdale. Lee. Um, so we know the Howards live in Dark Valley because Patrice had questioned that. Okay. We know and because Howard wrote it in his letters. Okay. Yeah. But, well, and do we have any not, other proof? Not, because not, as, a, as you know, Patrice has okay. questioned whether yeah. Howard was being. Added. I don't think he was questioning that. He was questioning. Um, the expediency of moving from Peaster to get away from Dark Valley. You would have to ask Patrice. I don't know. There's actually a chronological difficulty with, uh, with Dark Valley Peaster thing. Yeah. Because some of the energies camp did it seemed like they, they were saying that they were in Dark Valley, then they went to Peaster. But it just becomes clear from looking at the records that it's, they were in Peaster and then they went to Dark Valley. Right. No, they took a covered, Robert Howard wrote in a letter that they took a covered wagon down the Nueces. That's amazing. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, me, I thought it was something good. Sorry. Um, so you're doing another, like, 
moving type book, or what? What are you doing with all this information? Are you? Uh, people have asked me to just kind of collect all the documents and get them out. I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, I don't I, know. I, I, would, I, I was just curious what kind of book this would go into. You know, it's like. Uh, the original plan was Robert E. Howard, a biography in documents. Okay. But I, I don't know. It might never come out. Robert's so. been very generous with his knowledge to yes. I Yeah, if you want yes. it, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Just no, ask. It's interesting to see. It's like, wow. I mean, moving back in the day like that, I just can't imagine. You know, it's well, it's a lot of fun going into the courthouse and having to explain to yeah. every single district clerk <laughs> what a physician's registry is. We have that? Yes. Do you have any old books anywhere? Can I go look at them? Well, come on. You know, most places <laughs> let you write in, you know, here's our closet, there's our books, go wild. Uh, but the bigger, like San Antonio, no, you can't touch, you can't look, no, 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 no. You know, so they're not very helpful. But the small places, come on in, pull it out. Yeah, it's usually a, a, a rock building, and uh, you'll go to the basement down th through a, a steel door, down a spiral staircase, and there are the books, and you get to sift through them and wipe the dust off. And, yeah. You know, no one else has looked at this stuff but, in a long but time. But usually you'll find it. Yeah. Why did they take the covered wagon trip down the river? I mean, was it... Doc was, Howard was moving, man. I mean, he would... I don't know. Settled, like, he would just went from head to head. He doesn't explain why, only that it happened. And his sister, his sister, Willie, had just moved. To, yeah, his sister Willie was living in Crystal City, so it makes that makes the most sense to me. That's why I theorize that that's when that happened, when they were coming down from Bronx. Um, so you sh showed several slides, little snippets from these tiny town uh, newspapers. How are y'all searching them? I mean, There's uh, the easy stuff is when you can find them online. There's uh, a couple of pretty good newspaper scanning services that are online. You can pay a subscription service and go wild. <clears throat> there you can search. So there's a lot of free sites, but there's still some, um, we might get to it uh, later. There's still some where you have to go to the town, go to the public library, put your butt in a chair, and look at the microphone. Um, we have to do that in Lamp Passes yeah. and other places. But yeah, it's not, if, if it's online, great, but it usually just points you somewhere that you have to end up going to and, and doing the hard dig yourself. Laws about keeping all this documentation that goes back a hundred years. Are the counties required by law to keep? You would think so, but when we were went to Wichita Falls, uh, tracking the Wichita Falls country claim from Howard's letters, when we went to Wichita County, is that? Yes. yes. Uh, we went to their courthouse. The woman in charge of the district clerk's books was very happy. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this on camera. Uh, she was very happy that they had gotten rid of a bunch of those old books. So I don't know, you know, what they did with them, but she was happy to have the space. They might have sent them to a storage place or the uh, San Antonio registration. We went to Patrice and I went to the uh, courthouse there, and they're like, "We don't keep those books anymore. They're all in a storage facility. Let me call over there." So they called over there, and they had it. So we walked from the courthouse to this other place, and the, oh, it was hot and sweaty. Uh, but we were glad we went and found that document. Speaking of Lampasas. Okay. So, Lampasas. There's Rob looking at the microfiche. As, yeah, that, that's, that's what's yeah. old school for you. Yeah. And, and there's Ellen reading a book. She's bored. That's my mom. Yeah. And, and I guess I'm equally as bored because I'm taking pictures. <laughs> anyway, Rob found this. Turns out that uh, it's that's the date on April twentieth, eighteen eighty. Okay. Flip the slide. Um, Robert Howard had written a, a, bi a, lot, a biographical essay called *The Wandering Years*, and in it he says, you know, his great grandpa, his grandpa ran a silver mine in New Mexico, and he got chased off by Geronimo, and you know, blah. people were like, really, silver mine? So, so now this is. This is Hester's, Hester's, Hester's father. father. Okay. Uh, it was in Stein's Pass, New Mexico, to look after his mining interests. So we go to Lampasas yeah, so to do the yeah, hard dig. So I said, well, you know, Stein's Pass is, gee, it's right on the I-10. We go, we drive past it every time we come and go. So we, uh, we planned the first stop in Lordsburg to spend the night. Uh, before we checked into the room, we checked out Stein's Pass, which uh, I guess it's kind of a tourist ghost town. 
Uh, I don't know the vintage of these structures. They could be fake. They could be a movie set. In any event, this adobe wall on the right of the slide, I'm pretty confident that that's original. Wooden structures, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, Rob is walking near the railroad crossing grade uh, where there was a loading platform, and I'm thinking the depot probably once stood there as well. Uh, another shot of the <coughs> village, so to speak. Uh, next morning. Next morning, down to the courthouse, down in the cellar, look at land records. And by golly, there we are. And there's G.W. Urban. Uh, he was a part owner of the Robert E. Lee mine, a silver mine in New Mexico, of all places, just like Robert E. Howard said. So now these deeds are pretty descriptive. So when I got home, I thought, well, it'd be nice to get on Google Earth and see if we can figure it out. Uh, the yellow rectangle represents Irvin's claim, and those claims were 1,500 feet long by, I believe, 750 feet wide. Uh, the description was uh, one mile south of the Santa Fe Railroad track, uh, two and a half miles uh, west of Steens Pass. So that's approximately where the claim would be. Uh, Steens Pass is up in the top right corner of this slide. Best I could do. It's pretty hot and dusty out there. I don't know if the claims are marked. I don't believe I want to revisit the place and, and uh, lick rocks or kick snakes. So, and we have no pictures of it anyway. So. Yeah, that's, so, uh, that's a done deal. Uh, tell them about Mount Calm, Rob, and I'll talk about TK. Uh, when the Howard family moved from Arkansas to Limestone County, <coughs> they lived in and around Mount Calm. Uh, there's several small communities in that area. This one, TK, is one of them. Uh, David Terrell Howard, Isaac Howard's brother, so Robert Howard's uncle, lived the rest of his days right in that area. Take it away, Pop. And uh, he's buried in Antioch Cemetery? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, being somewhat of a railroad buff, I was fascinated by this newspaper clipping that Rob presented, uh, Mexica Daily, Mexica Daily Mexia. News, Mexia Daily News. I can speak sometimes. Anyhow, it says that a farmer was killed at a grade crossing near TK. Turns out that the uh, Cotton Belt Railroad uh, is the one that wild wested the poor soul, uh, killing his uh, donkeys or his burros. And uh, according to this article, uh, it was near a school, and uh, and David Terrell's children may have actually witnessed the accident. So I thought, TK, wow, well, let's, let's find out. Uh, no evidence of TK any place, but looking at Google Earth or Mount Com, by gosh, there's an old railroad grade. It's probably the Cotton Belt or the SP. And look at there, a road TK Parkway. Hmm, that's close. And a TK Cemetery. Gee whiz. <clears throat> TK couldn't have been very large. I'll bet that's the grade crossing where uh, David Terrell was killed. Couldn't find anything in Mount Calm. We might as well look around at TK, or at least for my benefit. So sure enough, there's Rob standing on the railroad grade. Uh, the black patch that he's standing on is where they removed the tracks and ties and filled it in with asphalt. Cotton Belt was, well, let me back up a second. In Howard's day, there were hundreds of Class I railroads. Today, there are seven Class I railroads. So. The airlines have pretty much uh, canceled out the, uh, the passenger train industry, and uh, the interstate highway system is doing a number on railroad freight. So anyway, down to 100, uh, down to 7. It just so happens that they ripped the tracks and the ties out from the road and just threw it aside next to the grade, it's right there. I wouldn't be surprised if DT's uh, DNA is in those ties. <laughs> and that's where it at the end. Uh, any more questions? Booyah. Let's go eat.